I mean, Westbrook scores 17, leads all Connecticut scorers as UConn tops the Marquette Golden Eagles 69 38. That's the final, Ryan, as the Connecticut Huskies improved to 21 and 5. It's listen up with Phil and Rye, and we're back to recap another UConn game, Ryan, and it's only two remaining on the regular season schedule. So we're getting down to the, the end. Um, and the Marquette Golden Eagles dropped to 18 and 10. This one was kind of a different kind of game than what we saw. The last time they faced Marquette, the uh, last time they faced the Golden Eagles, Ryan, it looked like Connecticut had a little bit of trouble. They pulled away in the fourth quarter. This time, Connecticut kind of played their defense like they usually do, their tall stand-up defense, and that was that. Came away with the victory. Yeah, UConn came out of this game and established herself early against Marquette. Uh, like you said, they really got their defense going. Uh, and and they shot, they shot the ball really good coming out of the first and second quarter there. Uh, you know, last time when these two games played, these two teams played, uh, Marquette, they came out hot. They shot the ball very well. Uh, in this game, you know, UConn held the opponent once again to under 50% shooting. Uh, Marquette, they only shot, let's see, 32%. So uh, another rough game for the opposing team against the Huskies. But this is a huge win, 20 and 5 for UConn. They get their 20th win. Uh, and this win secured the Big East regular season title. So, ninth consecutive conference championship dating back to seven years ago when they played in the American Athletic Conference. UConn, they had a 17 point lead at halftime. And the game kind of looked like it was already over, but UConn, they came out and they couldn't make a basket for the first three and a half minutes of the third quarter. Marquette cut the deficit to 10 points, but UConn, they stopped playing around. They came back with an 8-0 run of their own, and they just took control of the game from there, uh, 69-38 win. So, Avina Westbrook came off the bench, like you mentioned, had a really good night again, 17 points from her. AZ had 13. And Olivia Nelson Adota replaced Dorka in the starting lineup. Uh, I kind of figured this, you know, she would return to the starting lineup once she got fully healthy again and, and played a couple games after about a week off there. So she returned to the starting lineup tonight and she had a pretty good game four for four shooting 10, uh, 10 points, six rebounds and six assists. Aaliyah Edwards also had 10 points. So uh, another, uh, you know, everybody contributed uh, yes, uh, last night again for UConn. And uh, you know, we saw the, the split minutes, minutes going around for everybody uh, good shooting all around, 50% shooting again for UConn. So, uh, you know, just just a really uh, overall good game, another good game for UConn. Yeah, and again, we apologize for coming on uh, late um, again as we come on on this Thursday morning to recap the Wednesday night game. Uh, Ryan, I want to go over very quickly. You said that you told me uh, Dorka never played in this game. Is that correct? No, she did play it. I think she played it 16 minutes, if I'm correct on that. She only okay. got two points, but, uh, yeah, she she got – Did they decide to bench her in the beginning? No, no. I think I think Gino just, you know, wanted to live back in the starting lineup after – I think, okay. you know, he uh, had Dorka so, but, in I mean, there she for was about... out. So, that's what I was saying. Dorka was not in the starting lineup. Right. Okay. All right, with that said, uh, Ryan, we'll go over the box score, and then we'll see. Um, it looked like coming into this game for Marquette, the player to watch, I think, was Lauren Van uh, Clunen, and she scored 12 for Marquette. Again, you only scored 12 points, not going to get the job done against Connecticut. Yeah, and it's the only Golden Eagle uh, with over, you know, double digits, so – uh, you know, the, she was a starter, so at least the starter got over double digits. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said before, another a game where the, the opposing team shot under 50 percent. So it uh, really goes to show how good a defense UConn's been playing, especially these past couple games when they got Ducharme and Nelson Adota back. Uh, that really helped just, you know, the whole aspect of this team in terms of offense and defense. But Getting Nelson Adota's size back, I mean, she's 6'5", so, uh, you know, you know her blocks down inside and just her presence in the paint alone uh, just makes up for, you know, a lot of defense for this team. 
And going over the comments on the last video. Again, we appreciate you comment, commenting uh, before we get out of here, Ryan. Let's go over um, how is UConn ranked higher than LSU with that week schedule? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think UConn deserves to be ranked higher. Uh, I think uh, I, I was looking through those comments, and uh, I think a couple of these UConn fans – uh, back their Huskies up and were, were uh, putting some numbers together and argue, arguing for UConn. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think UConn deserves to be ranked higher than LSU. LSU, like we mentioned, has had a, a very good season, uh, you know, with, with their, their new coach down there. Uh, but, yeah, UConn, they, they've been on a roll. They, uh, they've won five or six straight, uh, you know, clinched the conference tonight, uh, last night. So, uh, you know, I think I think they deserve to be higher than LSU. And again, that was Anthony Taylor commenting. Thank you to Anthony Taylor. Next one, Ryan, two shot rig. I like this one. Okay, he goes. So, okay, guys, I have a few questions. I want your opinions? I got into women's college basketball because of Paige Beckers. We cannot deny how much she's attracted people to the game. Anyway, my question is, why does the women's college game have more attendance than the WNBA? When I tried watching the WNBA, for me, it didn't have any edge to it. I way prefer the women's college game with all the players coming back from injury. What would be your starting five? To be honest, it gives me a headache thinking about it. My one is Paige, Caroline, Nika, Liv, and Kristen. Ask me another time. It'll probably change. But what a bench. AZ, Dorka, Aaliyah, and Evina. Now yeah, that's get that's a good one, Ryan. Uh, thanks for to two shot Ray for that, Ryan. That's a lot of thinking there. Uh, to for you right off the bat. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, the, the first part of that comment, I, I kind of agree. Uh, I know I, I was at your house the other day, and we were looking at uh, the XL Center where UConn plays, and we were like, "Man, the the arena looks bigger than." Uh, the Mystics, where we, we visited WNBA before. Area, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I think that kind of speaks for not only women's college basketball, but all sports, uh, college football, uh, that the, the, the attendance and the, the student section really contributes to how uh, the, the, uh, the attendance there in, in all these college games uh, is just more hyped up than, than some professional teams. And there's just so much energy in these crowds. And it's really yeah. good to see at, at, you know, the NCAA level for all these sports. Mm -hmm. uh, but moving on to the starting five, once Paige Beckers comes back, hopefully. Uh, I think my starting five is Paige. Uh, I think AZ. I think Nelson Adota. I think you have to have in, her in there. Uh, Ducharme as well. I, I think I'd like to have her in there. Uh, and I think Aaliyah, I, I really like Olivia Nelson, Adota, and Aaliyah Edwards in the starting lineup just to get those size. They're, they're both around six foot five. So uh, their presence down there really makes up for a lot of their defense. So you was going with Paige, AZ, Adota, and then who was your other two? Uh, Ducharme and Aaliyah. Ducharme. And, okay, and Edwards. Right. So you're – yeah, that's to, I mean, on my if he wants my answer, I'd have to go with Paige AZ. I'd go with Adota. Um, Kristen Williams really shines, man, and she is a senior, yeah. isn't she? Yeah, Kristen she is. Williams. Chris, I had to go with Kristen Williams. Yeah, it's tough on the last spot, either Edwards or Dorka Juhas. I mean, Dor Dorka, she doesn't put up points every game, but she's really big on defense. We've seen that all year. Um, yeah, so again, we appreciate uh, him commenting. That was a good one. That was yeah. a good one. We we want to hear more from from two shot rake. Uh, here, how about this one, Ryan? Mister Fahrenheit goes. Can somebody tell me how UConn is ranked higher than LSU, especially with that sorry schedule they play? Shake my head. <laughs> well, that's like that's just like the first comment, Ryan. So they, they just can't believe it. <laughs> Well, and we've, we've gone over this before uh, when we've talked about the men's college basketball a year ago uh, mm -hmm. about about Gonzaga. And I think a lot of people talk about this w with Gonzaga uh, yeah. and the conference they play in. Uh, and, 
you know, UConn can't control their schedule and what conference they play in. Uh, so, you know, we, we've said before that, you know, in the, in the Big East Conference, none of these teams are ranked teams, but uh, we've seen the, that these teams, they, well, they can even beat UConn. They've beaten them th this season, something that we haven't really seen uh, in the years before. So uh, even though they're unranked teams, the, these teams do give UConn a tough time, especially with all the injuries they've had. Uh, so, you know, you, they can't control their schedule. So that, that's something to keep in mind. It's the committee for you, right? That's a, yeah. that's a committee. Uh, okay, next one goes, uh, this is uh, DN Lizzie 88. So they, uh, they go, hey, guys, I'm 52 and have seen every player since Lobo, Mama Buckets. Oh, wow. One thing I'm very happy about is Gino is stealing minutes this year, which means that we won't be – out of gas down the stretch like in the past eight like in the past uh eight from avena eight from nika and we will beat anyone Paige doesn't have to play as many minutes or carry the load like she did because we are a better team number 12 on the way let's go that's a good point ryan because if you remember when they lost uh what was it last season or wait a minute i don't know if it was a was it the season before because this is only Paige's second year i was thinking about the pandemic so Whatever that was where they lost against uh, Arizona. Was yeah, it Arizona? And, yeah, in the Final Four last year, I, I believe they lost to Arizona. Arizona, yeah. So, well, that's a good point because see how they had to focus so much on Paige Beckers. I think that's obviously why she got shut down. She couldn't – she was off her game. We saw her miss a lot of shots in the playoffs um, that year. So, again, yeah, that is a good point because now does it even – you you, you would <clears> – <throat> First, first things first, you would take a step back and, and be like, well, yeah, it's going to hurt them if Paige can't play as much. Maybe this is better. Yeah, and I completely agree with that because especially with UConn completely healthy now uh, and able to have those, those two or three players coming off the bench, uh, especially when, when Paige comes back, and I, I mm -hmm. agree with that as well, that she won't have to play 30, 35 minutes a game for this UConn team, maybe she can only she only has to play 20 or 25 uh, when she comes back. You know, you have these players like AZ and Ducharme now uh, that are experienced now and have the games played uh, while she was out. So, you know, it benefits the whole team. Next one. OK, Grobel. Here's one of our favorites. Uh, we appreciate Grobel commenting again. He's back and he goes, UConn has virtually no chance to be paired in the same region as South Carolina, South Carolina will be in greensboro the other regions um are spoken <laughs> right i, I can never say spokane. It. It's sp spokane spokane wichita bridgeport the committee keeps teams at the closest site guaranteed if they are on the one or two line on the three line they try to keep teams close to home unless the conference affiliation uh, rule kicks in the conference affiliation rule was why UConn in the first reveal was in Spokane you said yeah okay and then the second reveal UConn was still a three seed and number 11 overall but was placed in Bridgeport without the conference affiliation rule being used so all right pretty much he's getting into the the details I'll be honest with you now I'm not too familiar with yeah, me either. And thanks for commenting that because I, I was yeah, kinda, it teaches us exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we appreciate it. Yeah, I was kind of interested in, in how that worked. And I, I thought that's what I heard before it went on that there's a there's a really, really good chance the Yukon was not going to be paired in the same region as South Carolina. So hopefully uh in the final four or even the national championship game, uh we we'd be able to see that that rematch. I think that's what that's we're all hoping for. That's good. Yeah, that is – that's what we want, right? Because especially if they run into each other early in the tournament, I mean, that knocks – it It obviously knocks either UConn or South Carolina out, and that's right. not – But I think that's what Grobel was saying. That's not what you want. You want these two teams to be in it for the long run. Yeah, uh, save the best for last, right? Uh, there you go. All right, Aaron Davis goes, I'm a game-goer and haven't missed a single XL and Gamble game. Nothing like being there, and you guys need to show Kristen Williams some love. That ankle breaker in the third against Georgetown, epic. Still too many missed layups and travel calls with the post players. Hey, look, 
Aaron Davis. I had Kristen Williams, or actually, you yeah, know, he said Kristen Williams. Okay. No, I had, yeah, I mentioned her, Ryan, as, as we went over our starting five. So, yeah, I told you, man, Kristen Williams needs some love, some more love, Aaron Davis says. Yeah, and I saw that on the highlights as well. The bench was going crazy over there when when she kind of faked and, and did the the uh the the ankle breaker against Georgetown. That that was a sick move. But yeah, Kristen Williams senior on this team, uh yeah. she really doesn't doesn't get a, all the credit she deserves. Uh with with Paige going out, she was one of the leaders as well. Uh and, and being on this team for four years, that really showed. Uh and she contributes on her offensive side. Uh, scoring you know double digits almost every single game, but her her defense as well is pretty solid. They're going to miss her. Let's just say yeah. that much uh, when she leaves. Next one is Grobel again. If you guys need content during the all season or during the break between Big East tourney and NCAA tourney, you guys could talk future recruits and commits. Twenty twenty two class officially signed. Okay, so then he goes on. All right, so this is a longer comment. We're just going to leave it at that because we'll. We'll actually hit on the information he provided, and then we'll make a whole episode out of that. So, Grobel, we appreciate that yeah, a Thank lot. you for that, yeah. Yes. Uh, and then the last one, Ryan, we'll just go over uh, – we'll leave it at this. We'll leave uh, John Brubaker will be our last one for this episode. And he goes – Sorry again, sorry if we didn't get to you guys. Um, we, we definitely appreciate you commenting, and then hopefully eventually in the – future episodes to come we will eventually read your comments just keep them coming john brubaker goes this is a phenomenal vid guys count me in uh count me as a new subscriber wife and i are season ticket holders and the enthusiasm is really building towards well why not say it the possibility of something really special in 2022 keep up the great content phenomenal comments about the strength depth and power of the coaching staff John Brubaker, man, that warms your heart. We appreciate that. I know Ryan does too. Yeah, it does. Thank you so much. And, and thanks to everybody, really, for all the love and support we've received for these past couple of weeks. I mean, the, the views on these videos are insane. Uh, the comments are, are always great to see. We love reading them. I love responding to them. So uh, keep it up, guys. And it's, it's very, very appreciated. Next one, Ryan, on the schedule. Who is it? Who is it? Uh, who you got? You can't. I don't. I'm not sure if you're going to go against Connecticut on these last two games. How could you? I mean, it looks like they're rolling all of a sudden. Yeah, I think they got St. John's on Friday, and then they finish it all Sunday against Providence. So already got the the regular season Big East clinch. Uh, so hopefully that that doesn't uh, slow down their pace of play. I don't think it will. I think Gino will have them have them coming out firing. Uh, you know, finish off these these two in conference opponents and and get ready for the Big East tournament. And that's it uh, on Listen Up, Ryan. And next one, you're right, is tomorrow. It's tomorrow, seven o'clock. We're gonna try to do our best to come to you right after that game Friday night to recap that one. St. John's Red Storm and the number seven Connecticut Huskies tomorrow as March Madness is right around the corner.